Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula, live again for the second week in a row. Hopefully, we're going to keep this going. Um, I just wanted to uh, say that there's definitely a lot been going on here, for sure, especially this week here at MCAT, as we are uh, transitioning into more of our summer camp mode. More and more spots are becoming filled up. So, so far, I believe that there are only a couple spots remaining in our last animation camp, which runs from August 2nd through the 6th. Um, that's Monday, It's and it happens Monday through Friday from 1 to 5 p.m. here at the new beautiful public library, which is open from... 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's going to be great. Not to mention, I just want to give a nice shout-out to the library. Uh, the grand opening, once again, is going to be happening on Wednesday, July 14th. So from 1 to uh, about 7 p.m., there's going to be activities, and each uh, partner is going to showcase their talents during this grand opening with a ribbon cutting kicking us off again on July 14th. Let's talk about some news. U.S. President Biden met with Russian leader Vladimir Putin to improve relationships between the two countries, regardless of how many times Americans throw Russians under the bus, which we, we really do, regardless of the facts that the Soviet U Union hasn't really existed since 89, yet we still use it as a scapegoat. But I digress. Putin spoke in a press conference after the three-hour uh, meeting. The meeting was very uh, intriguing. Chess match between the U.S. criticizing the uh, Russians for locking up political prisoner Alexei Navalny and Putin criticizing the January 6th insurrection saying that people came to the U.S. Congress with political demands. Putin continued, they are being called domestic terrorists. So far, the meeting was considered a productive, and I'm kind of speaking from the hip, a reflection of the Obama administration and the continued efforts from the former administration moving forward with relations with Russia. So far, uh, let's see, uh, to qu the quote to look from the meeting was that Putin considered this meeting constructive. NPR reporter Tamara Keith had the story. Um, right now, America death toll for COVID has reached over 600,000 folks, uh, which is the highest rate in the world, um, with Brazil at 491,000 people um, taking the second spot. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely taken aback at this uh, because about a year ago, the projected deaths for the end of this summer were only going to be $60,000 by end of summer 2020. COVID news in Missoula. I heard some chat about some anti-vax protesters outside of Lucky's Market where they're offering free vaccinations and walk-in clinics. There's not much news about this since there's about two to three people with signs. Uh, I wanted to mention this because uh, someone I knew actually got COVID regardless of their vaccine. But because of the vaccine, it relegated the COVID to... Uh, a common cold, so it was a big issue, and uh, I mean, what we've been dealing with for quite a while now. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit more, uh, not necessarily about the PRO Act, but I wanted to talk about the right to work. In Montana, and uh, Montana out of 27 other states, is it considered a right to work state. So I'm going to go I into this a little bit more, and I got this information from the e Economic Policy Institute, which talks about how it's wrong for Montana, and with unemployment benefits frozen for Montana's started in June, uh, who do not have jobs, and to get, I so this was kind of an experiment by our uh, governor, Greg Gianforte, uh, g wanting to get people back to work. So part of this was he wanted to freeze unemployment for about s uh, for six weeks, making sure that people who have employment work for those six weeks, and then they would get uh, the the equivalent of six weeks worth of $300 a week of unemployment. So that was the kind of deal. But Montana, compared to every other state in uh, the U.S., is about 3.7% of unemployment, which the nat national average is 6.1. Uh, but of course, let's b get back to this right to work law. And they, uh, so this is what it said on the Econ Economic Policy Institute. Right to work laws do not confer any sort of right to a job, rather than they dilute worker bargaining power by making it illegal for a group to unionize workers to negotiate a collective bargaining contract. That includes fair share fees. A contract with a fair share fees requires all employees who enjoy the contract benefits to pay their share of the cost of negotiating and enforcing it. Under the right to work law, employees who do not join the union but who are still part of a collective bargaining unit would get all the benefits from uni union memberships without having to pay the dues. And part of this is that when you're with a union, yes, there are dues, but part of this has wage increases and the, the dues, much like how you would pay HOAs, goes towards collective bargaining. You can hire a lawyer and you can uh, talk to managers and be like, hey, we want more money for this as well. But with the right to work, it basically says is that um, 
from what I've seen and in terms of examples, I don't have any clear examples, but think about it like in terms of this. So you have a contractor, you hire this uh, construction business to do a job, and one is cheaper than the other, so you obviously go with the cheaper, and the cheaper one has uh, non-union workers. So in a lot of ways, you think that uh, they're going to be paying the co company or whatever less. In fact, they're going to be paying the same amount to the company. It's just the workers that get paid less as a result. Lower union dues tends to limit powers of unions, which use the dues to pay for lawyers, negotiators, uh, to get fair wages, and for the most part, reflect current living standards, which has uh, spiked in Montana. And an example uh, that I heard anecdotally, for sure, when I was in Deer Lodge, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but. Uh, in Deer Lodge, a home in Deer Lodge basically f the past year uh, shot up from 100000 to about $300 a home uh, just this past year. In Montana, a typical worker who is represented by union contract has a higher wage than a typical non-union worker. Specifically, the median hour wage of union workers in Montana is $22.85 uh, per hour compared to the non-union workers, which would get $16.95. Right-to-work laws prey on the desperate to find work, to have long, uh, lower wages and standard to basically gaslight them into accepting less. Uh, the more I look into this, uh, th I'm reminded of the demand for workers in Missoula. It is seems every other place th here has a help wanted sign, and most of the wages do not reflect the cost of living. And just speaking from the hip, service industry workers shouldn't have to struggle to stay in Missoula just to be replaced by another person who cannot afford to live here. You want to create a place for people who want to stay? Start with better wages. Moving on, uh, your fearless host, like I said, uh, from the example of Deer Lodge, will be uh, an actor. I'll be acting in a show uh, at the Cutler Brothers Theater in Deer Lodge, happening, uh, premiering tonight. Um, and it'll be going on for six shows with a Friday, Saturday show at 7.30 p.m. and a matinee show on Monday, on Sunday at 2 p.m. And now here's the pitch. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross is an old play from the 1980s. Um, which c got converted into a 1992 movie starring Al Pacino, um, Jack Lemmon, of all people, uh, may rest in peace. And uh, it is a wonderful representation of uh, kind of like fast-talking salesmen in the 80s. But be aware there's over 150 F-bombs in this play, and yours truly will be uh, contributing to that uh, tonight. So uh, if you want to check it out, tickets are on sale right now. Um, you can buy them online. You can call ahead to the Cutler Brothers Theater. But yep, right now I have a special interview for y'all from the downtown p Missoula Downtown Partnership. And here is Linda McCarthy talking about Out to Lunch. All right, hey guys, we're here with Linda McCarthy. She is with the uh, Missoula Downtown Partnership. Downtown Missoula Partnership, yes. Yep. And you're here to talk a little bit more about Out to Lunch and Downtown Tonight, which right. is back, baby. It's yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. So we're very excited to bring back the beloved Out to Lunch Summer Series, which has been happening in Missoula since 1986. Mm. Um, and of course, we modeled that program and created the Downtown Tonight Summer Series in 2001. Um, so we've had over 20 years of that program as well. These are our weekly admission-free and accessible for all events that we do in Karis Park, Wednesdays from 11 to 2, Thursdays from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. We do them in June, July, and August. Generally, they are uh, created to bring people to our community downtown and bring them together. Um, we always have live music and lots of food vendors. Normally, we have children's activities, but this year we put a pause on those. You know, it was kind of a hard year for planning with the pandemic. Are we on? Are we off? Do we have to modify or not? So we rolled out the first week of June, which everybody was very excited about. And we had very good weather and very good attendance. You know, and we typically will have um, somewhere between 2,000 and 3,500 people per event, depending upon how good the weather is, whether school's in session or not. Um, and, and it's really great because we'll bring thousands of people to downtown. Um, people get to see each other. I've seen so much hugging over the course of the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and this has been a perfect example of just how basically to tell everyone that Missoula's back. Yeah, Like yeah. our gatherings, going out uh, on the town at nights. It's just like the perfect it's time. It's kind of been a little crazy downtown. I don't know if you've been out on yes. a Friday or Saturday, but... 
people are consuming downtown. The markets are back. I mean, all even the even some of the uh, stores that are just kind of like hidden, like some of the new ones that's popped up that I never heard of. Like I went in there and they're packed. Yeah, yeah it's, lots it's of restaurants crazy. doing very well right now. You know, everybody's kind of in that recovery mode. And we actually had 20 new businesses open last year. Yeah, I heard that there is a kind of a huge renaissance of food trucks, yeah. which is what is very uh, a big staple of Out to Lunch in downtown yeah. tonight. So for people watching, what are the difference between uh, downtown tonight yeah. and Out to Lunch? So Out to Lunch is happening during the middle of the day, middle of the week, during lunch hour, so 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, oftentimes we see people coming from their downtown offices, lots of folks on vacation, um, very popular with our senior population, um, kids in camps, um, and it's it's a lunch hour, so the weather's warmer, the sun is sunnier, uh, middle of the day, middle of the week kind of thing. Downtown tonight is a little bit more casual and raucous, um, so it's an after work summer series. People typically go home, get their summer clothes on, grab their bikes, their kids, come back downtown. Uh, similar in terms of vending and live music, what's different is we offer adult beverages. So we have Badlander catering, beer, wine, and liquor at the event, so people can have a drink and sit in the park. Um, again, we're not doing kids' activities this year. We'll bring them back next yep. year. A lot of times kids' activities are very hands-on, mm -hmm. and so... Interactive, you know, face-to-face, -face. Yep. so we wanted to be you a want little to just be a little bit safer. Cautious, oh, yeah. yeah. And, and there's been so many new food vendors and food trucks yes. so you know it used to be they were all vendors with the pop-up tents and the you know the the heat warming dishes mm -hmm. and and we've had a lot of people turn to entrepreneurship and open their own food truck with the idea that they're gonna run the food truck yep. full time and some uh, even uh, some restaurants have actually scaled back to do the food truck and a lot of the services, I, I like. I'm sure you read the story about the one in Kalispell that was a restaurant and they just couldn't open because yeah. it was so small inside. Yeah. But their food truck saw a relative amount of success, so I'll, it's always like a good option to kind of bring the food to certain to areas. The people, and there's right? so many good places. Like I, I can't name them all, <laughs> but there's neither. been a, yeah. And I don't want to. I don't want to give them any kind of uh, we. But <laughs> edge. it's really fun to see the new creative food that's coming out. So like we had that happen here, the empanada joint. Yep. So she closed at the beginning of the pandemic, and then she invested in a truck, and now she's out doing empanadas all over town, yep. and I think doing very well. Mm -hmm. And and then we have a lot of food trucks that are partnering with breweries, you know, and, and doing the brewery thing. I, I think overall in Missoula, we have close to 40 food trucks. We don't have that many at our programming. We yep. only have about 15 or so. And one of my favorite, uh, there's a beer, kind of like a beer truck, and they uh, changed it from an old ambulance into like a, Kind of like a kegerator. Oh, I haven't seen yeah. that one That's yet. really cool. I've seen those at, um, I think that was, I've seen that at least once or twice at the downtown tonight oh, before. Oh, wow. That's great. So lots of cool food vendors, different kinds of food too. So, you know, you've got your ice cream and mountain berry bowls and, you know, of course, El Cazador and Caddy Wagon. But, you know, we have some new Arabian food mm. and we have a new, um, a new vendor that's aged called AJ's that's doing um, vegetarian food wow. and um, gluten free food. Um, we so we have a we have somebody else called Bon that's doing some new uh, Asian food. I haven't tried it yet. Mm. I always there's try just so it. many things. Yeah, out there. so many wonderful things to try. Um, if you don't, uh, you know, every week, every single week, yep. Wednesdays until I believe uh, two Wednesdays eleven to two through August. Right. Mm -hmm. And so kind of like Labor Day is like the, the weekend where everything yeah. just kind of... So at the end of the summer, we do River City Roots Festival. Right. You know, food and music and art in the streets. And, and so we end our Out to Lunch in Downtown Tonight programming the last Wednesday and Thursday of August. Kids are back in school. Camps and fall sports are doing their thing. So nice. it's true summer programming. Um, and it's really great because um, we see people of all ages and all abilities. Um, and Karis Park is very easy to access. We have both Mountain Line um, running the trolley on um, oh, out to lunch nice. um, days. And then, you know, Mountain Line is available also through the evenings. And then we also have U Dash at the University of Montana running on Wednesdays. And anybody can catch the U Dash bus. You don't have to be a UM student or faculty member. Cool. And what are the, uh, some of the uh, restrictions with COVID and everything? Do you have any, any of that? So what we really want is for people to be distanced from people they don't 
housed with. Right. Um, we started out wanting people to wear masks under the pavilion, but that's not working out the way we'd hoped. You know, they've peeled back the mask mandate, and, you know, the new CDC guidelines say if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. It is an outdoor venue, so that makes it nice. We have spread out seating throughout the area instead of running that, you know, single line seating down underneath the pavilion. And I do know for a fact, um, for COVID restrictions, if you are taking any of those buses, TSA, federal government guidelines do require a mask, mask, at least until September 13th. Good reminder. Thank you very yeah. much. Yes. And, and then when you come for downtown tonight, of course, if you're going to have an adult beverage, we want you to buy a wristband. So we know you've been ID'd. And, um, and I think it's like, is it like a three token $1 deal? $1 for a wristband. No tokens for downtown tonight. Three tokens for Roots Fest. Oh, okay. <laughs> And then um, we do have other events happening in Karis Park, like Margarita Fest and Maverick Brew Fest in oh, September yeah. and German Fest. You got all the in fests. The you got all those fests coming. Not as Missoula. many as normally. Yeah. You know, we, we, we Hello, didn't have any events great. early Wait, on. Wait, could you just stop me for a second? I'm going to edit around this. This We've asked them to stop doing this in this room particularly. And then we can pick up right where we left off now. That's wonderful. Well, thanks, Linda. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming down here. And if you want more information, you can go to their website at MissoulaDowntown.com or follow Missoula Downtown on Facebook or Instagram. We're posting weekly about what's coming up. Live music every week. Um, local musicians starting small, single duo kind of performers early nice. on and then growing to be more bigger bands towards the end of the summer. Um, and it's been really great to see people coming back to downtown and supporting our locally owned businesses and our food trucks and watching people surf the wave and hike the riverfront trail. We're very blessed to live in Missoula, Montana. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, I did not edit around the <laughs> announcements, but here I am anyways. Uh, let's kick things off with a couple of uh, movies and stuff that are coming out this uh, weekend that you might want to you want to skip for sure. Let's kick things off with a unapolog uh, unapologetic uh, um, assassination -esque, uh, escapade comedy death thing. Samuel Hayek and Samuel Jackson must say they're... Uh, uh, Oh, right. Samuel Hayek and Samuel L. Jackson must say the L star in the opposite Ryan Reynolds, who is tasked to protecting a very difficult and strong-willed assassin slash wife of an assassin in a series of movie called The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Um, but just kind of wings it. So the whole idea is it's uh, some funny moments regarding death and destruction of property. But let's all forget that and re remember a simpler time when movies and shows meant nothing to folks. Oh, wait, they already do. Watch this movie that <laughs> made enough to justify a sequel. Up next, we got Now You Can Sing Happy Birthday Without Giving Royalties comes The Birthday Cake, which is kind of like uh, an innocent title and throwing it into a revenge thriller with a kind of Macbeth kind of feel to it. So actors from Val Kimmer to Ewan McGregor, Ewan Obi-Wan McGregor is basically a Shakespearean Macbeth type drama, mob boss and dead uncle, but things happen and protagonist is gaslit into killing the mob boss and either assume the throne or dismantles the business from the inside out. Then finally, we have this other movie that's coming out, Back to the Future, will mostly likely be referenced in this movie, Summer of 85, which follows the adventures of a coming-of-age teenager trying to have one last hurrah before adulthood crushes his soul. It's very gay, and as from the synopsis in this movie, the character is saved by the friend of his dream. Okay, this just got... This is not your normal 80s movie. This is very French love story. I didn't say it from um, my head or a script. Oh, I did read it from the script. It's written on the poster. Call me by your name. Eat your heart out because this time they're the same age. I love these kind of movies even though when I hear French and love in the same sentence, sadness is sure to follow. But the French know how to make sad and depressing look really, really cool. Up next, we have a fun... Uh, ooh... We got a nice fun video for you guys, and uh, as soon as I get my mouse working on here, uh, oh well, let's see, that's not good at all. Hold on a second. I would change the camera, but I, oh, that's unfortunate. We're going to be stuck with this whole image. Oh, the whole system froze. All right, well, I'm going to be... Uh, I, jeez, I, I just can't have that on the screen. 
<laughs> That's so annoying. Oh well. Well, I'm gonna um, take a quick uh, break and uh, hopefully we'll be right back. So stay with me. Definitely the Charlie Brown of the RPG world. Let's continue talking more about what's happening before uh, <laughs> this freezes again. All right, let's try this again. Uh, kicking things off with some city council. The city council official meeting, uh, which happens every Monday at 6 p.m. Uh, it was a 20-minute meeting. They didn't talk too much about it. Most of the stuff that they cleared in terms of uh, approval was the fire department paramedic program that I talked about last week, the East Missoula Corridor in terms of funding uh, mechanisms, uh, the Higgins Avenue Mill overlay. So this is part of the Brooks to University Avenue with a cost reimbursement of $182,000 from Montana Department of Transportation. McNick Flats, New Mullen area, park cash in lieu up to $208,000. Uh, um, and then of course the MCAT uh, contract renewal between Missoula Charter Spectrum and the city of Missoula. So some good news there. Uh, a lot of that was approved by council. The meeting was about 20 minutes long and they had a proclamation which they talked about Juneteenth. And uh, just so you guys know, um, President Biden made it a, a, an officially federally recognized holiday starting uh, tomorrow, uh, June 19th for Juneteenth. Uh, let's talk about some community meetings. I'm going to give a quick overview of that because I do have clips for you guys, mind you. Uh, we're kicking things off uh, with a little bit of admin and finance to talk about the Trinity Departments, which are going to be 202 uh, housing units uh, for low-income families. And this is an approximately a job for uh, property management, about a $17.74 uh, 74 an hour or less than one person uh, who's making about $52,640 or less for a household of four, depending on the size of the threshold. So 30 to 70% Missoula area media income for these specific housing. Public Works looks to update the met uh, Metropolitan and Long Run Transportation Plan, buses and boundaries based on the 1980s requirements that require an update through the Montana MPO, the Me uh, Missoula Metropolitan Planning Organization. As we grow, we change. This is an important for infrastructure and long, li long range transportation as well. Um, parks and conservation, not nothing much, but about, about appointments for contracts of thinning of the forest up on Mount Jumbo and Marshall Canyon for the upcoming fire seasons. Um, let's see. Now we're kicking off with some community of the whole in which we are talking about housing and housing issues and also uh, surveys that was taken through the um, the Homeward and the Landlord Liaising, uh, li Liaison Housing Advocate Network. This is the hope is that information can be used to consider development or redefine the other programs throughout the state, as well as garnering uh, community feedback on existing programs. If you are a renter, this is the meeting for you. Let's kick things off with Dale Bickle with a survey conducted on this year versus 2018. The pollsters asked residents what are the most 
pressing problems facing people in the city today. And they took the top three responses from uh, each participant. And this is the uh, results of that uh, with comparisons to 2018. And this is uh, some of the most interesting slide of the um, presentation because it actually changed quite a bit, um, as you, you can see here. So housing um, was the top response in 2018, and it increased, as you see our uh, the, um, the, the housing challenges and housing crisis we're in now. Uh, but then things started changing a little bit. So homelessness and poverty uh, jumped up to the number two issue uh, facing Missoula, where, whether it was you know, down the list in 2018, you can see there. Um, jobs and cost of living uh, stay, in third, stay in third with a similar um, percent of people. Um, and then taxes and spending, um, which was a, the, the top priority or the second most priority in 2018 has dropped to four. Um, you see traffic management congestion um, are, are similar, but it is lesser of a concern. Um, streets and other maintenance, uh, other infrastructure changed uh, sig significantly as well. Number four on the list in 2018 is now dropped to um, drop down the list to six. Um, and so you see some of those other things on there, managing growth and development, not on the list as we see our community start growing rapidly, uh, climate and then climate and environment um, 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 uh, listed on the list with more people uh, responding and we're using that uh, issues with less than a 3% response rate are combined into the other category. All right. So uh, Dale Bickle continue to talk more about some of the statistics and some of the feedback. Uh, job and cost of living are similar on average of 13% of concern. Homelessness becoming a major issue behind housing, which has been a hot topic in Missoula as the owner to renter divide grows ever wider. Quality of life for folks is relatively good because Missoula is the kind of place people want to come to uh, live regardless of the struggles in staying in Missoula. Good schools, good community uh, services for many residents. Dale talks about the uh, overall satisfaction between renters and buyers um, in transitions. And so you can see the vast majority of uh, Missoula residents uh, rate their quality of life ex excellent or good. Uh, go ahead to the next one, Jess. I mean, here's that comparison to 2018. So it's very similar, um, slightly less in 2021, um, you know, as uh, presumably as we're emerging, emerging from the pandemic, but uh, 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 people are generally rate their quality of life in Missoula as excellent or good. I'm trying to... All right. So, oh, I just skipped ahead right there. Let's uh, talk a little bit more. Uh, when asked about other categories, it, re uh, it represents folks moving in or out of places. One of the statistics has said that they are able to get uh, only able to get 25 people surveyed in terms of because uh, you know there's renters and owners, but then there's also transitional people. But uh, they surveyed over 230, 200 to 300 renters slash owners. Um, and I do agree with a better place uh, than renters in Missoula because I've known some people struggling to pay rent and even moving out for some of them is liberating for some folks looking for a change in the current living situation. So transitional people um, have, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it does feel pretty good to uh, move out of a, any kind of situation, but I, I can keep showing you statistics on these surveys, but I'll leave you with that to watch later. Um, these are uh, to look into patterns that focus on the city resources to its overall quality of life for Missoulians. Later on in the meeting, Missoula Interfaith Collaborative with Homeward presented uh, Alex Ramsey, the landlord liaison with uh, Homeward, uh, kick things off, um, and this is what he had to say. Um, trying to recruit new landlords and property managers with the eviction moratorium. A lot of landlords have just sort of put the brakes on communication a lot of times. Um, COVID communication challenges as well, you know, especially when working with private landlords, a lot of people want to work, you know, more one-on-one, -on -one, more in person, you know, there's less of that able ability to have those handshake conversations with people um, with this more online phone call Zoom atmosphere. Um, so those have been two kind of challenges recruiting, um, recruiting new landlords and property managers in the last year and a half. Um, other challenges that we faced as well, low vacancy rates. So it's been hard to um, connect and communicate with new landlords, especially since they can fill a, a, a home in 
a day, two days, three days. You know, a lot of landlords I've been hearing, they put uh, a new apartment or a new home uh, for rent and they've got 40 applications within a couple of days. So um, a lot of time they're not ready or willing to have those conversations about, um, you know, housing folks who, um, who are, um, you know, but have perceived barriers that people have. All right. Uh, so, housing... oh, so yeah. Alex Ramsey continues to talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, it's basically a landlord uh, community with the overall uh, influx of like people who wanting to rent and wanting to be in Missoula, even get in, getting moving out, um, is great. But finding a place to move into is getting more and more difficult here in the city of Missoula, as you heard. You know, 13 to about 20 people can be jumping on a home at any given time. So risk mitigation, it's a, a fund that helps pays any lingering debt that gets unresolved. And part of this is to encourage uh, landowner, uh, landlords to uh, feel more confident in having um, a renter move in who may or may not be a high risk uh, renter. So um, this is what he had to say about this. Here's Alex. If something were to happen, some sort of um, um, dispute between the landlord and the tenant, some sort of issue, it usually will happen for within that first year. Um, we have, it was a $10,000 grant uh, provided by um, Missoula County. So it's a matchup, it's a one-to-one -one matchup. So each tenant landlord house uh, gets a thousand dollars it's not provided up front but it's available in case something happens uh, and then after that year is completed then that thousand dollars becomes available for a a new household so basically uh it's a grant for any eventuality it's basically money that could be used um if it needs to be used so it's a it's a great program put in place to help uh encourage uh landlords to uh, uh process and have somebody move in who may again have certain barriers um, and one of the one of the things that I've heard even from public comment in some of these meetings is that one of the barriers even seems to be those vouchers the vouchers that they hand out for people who uh, are struggling to find a place and these vouchers are supposed to uh, provide them with the uh, the extra the extra uh, benefit to do so but in ways has been some um, stigmatized by some all right so let's uh the possibility the possibility of a grant source that would provide relief for landlords slash renters in the transitional period of down payment and security parts are important for those wanting to move out without issues regarding their past rentals as an excuse to deny future housing once a person gets in a stigma it's really hard to find housing after the fact another process uh that has been highlighted in this presentation is the housing advocate network han for short is and the missoula interfaith collaborative presented by Z uh zeke uh campfield who talks about uh their organization a little bit more we're utilizing relational currency um and uh getting to know people who are experiencing homelessness or at risk of experiencing homelessness, um, kind of uh, listening and supporting them through the process and then um, helping them navigate resources or sharing information or answering questions or uh, making calls together with them so that we can address any sort of barriers or complications that, that they might be experiencing as they look to get into to housing and, and move on with their story. All right. So, um, yeah, that's uh, the, the, there's definitely a lot of things moving forward. Uh, you know, I've noticed that the city of Missoula, you know, like we can get we can talk about homelessness and the issues happening here in the city of Missoula. But Paul Varela does this model of reaching out to people to try to get them help and try to follow the guidelines that housing is not impossible for folks, regardless of difficulty. Even folks who are former incarcerated individuals who are 10 times more likely to be homeless are helped along with the city's continued support for the jails diversion program. Even worse are those in foster care who are at a 25 percent of the overall homeless homeless population so a lot of times they age out of foster care and the state doesn't um, considers them adults so they're basically on their own in that way but at the same time when you think about it what 18 year old really knows what they're doing with their life uh, Zeke talks about the current struggles in uh, finding homes um, but as we look at all those things um, we have the voucher and rental assistance programs aren't always funded so that's where you hear about the three to five year wait for a section eight voucher um you know for example that's so and, or the other properties that are available the low-income housing their wait lists that can be four months six months a year um, so we have these solutions in place but there's such a great need 
um, that often there are wait lists. Um, secondly, as Alex talked about, um, right now with the, the housing crisis and just in general, it's a landlord's market. They, um, if they're gonna have uh, one opening open up in a month and there's gonna be 50 people that apply for it, then um, they get to be more picky and selective about who qualifies. Um, and so that means sometimes that folks with um, barriers or even folks that have Section 8 vouchers, for example, may, um, may run out of time. The voucher may expire before they're able to find a place that will accept them. Um, politics, I certainly don't wanna lecture the Missoula City Council on politics. Um, however, as we all know, systemic change comes really slowly. Um, there can be, you know, the whole not in my backyard approach and, um, you know, we want to do this, but there's all these other things to consider. Um, the state legislature sometimes um, disrupts our ability to make decisions that our community feels like would be best for our community members. Um, and then in general, just the change over the last decades, the, the breakdown of the social fabric between, you know, the cliche terms, the haves and the have nots. Um, we have a consumer and service provider dynamic and we have folks who are um who are marginalized and aren't connected and um and are really grappling with some really significant issues um, behavioral health mental health substance use um, trauma they're, they're often doing this on their own without the resources that are there to help them address those and move on from those specific issues all right so that was uh just a kind of a overview about the overall issues that are happening um, the biggest takeaway from this meeting tends to lean towards lack of resources for folks who do not have homes, cannot get access to uh, benefits, and those who do get access how are put on a waiting list. And even this shows you uh, that you may be uh, like you know like you may be you may have not have access to a charter spectrum. You might not even have the uh, cable channel, so you won't have access to this. You might even have you not you might not even have access to. Wi-Fi or internet or anything like that and so it's almost impossible for you to get in contact with which I'm going to leave this meeting and of course you can find out more information by going to ci.missoula.mt.us it is a wonderful website where you can find out more information I'm going to leave you with this thought so imagine you're kind of on the road uh, your car breaks down your phone battery dies um, or how about no no actually the best my down I actually wrote this down I should have not did this from memory but h here's the idea um, we live in a world where we can have speed dial we know all, all all our contacts are on our phones or anything like that so in a lot of ways uh, can if you lost your phone you didn't have a phone and you someone that you lent you their phone would you be able to call anyone uh, just from memory. How many phone numbers do you have memorized, and how many people can you depend on? Um, that is not 911 and emergency services. I think that's just a, really something to really think about. All right, so I'm going to end my segment there. I do want to throw it over to another interview that I had with uh, uh, the uh, founder and person for. Uh, let me just double check. That's Lacey Rathbun. Um, she was like I was talking uh, to her a little bit more, um, and we. we uh, let me take that back. So uh, Lacey Rathburn, uh, Rathbun, who is uh, one of the founders of 406families.org, and it's a, it is a website that is geared towards uh, providing families with access to events, uh, summer camps, and just all fun, uh, family fun-based activities for the family. So without further ado, I'm going to show an interview with her, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about events and other things that are happening in the city of Missoula. Hello and welcome to this interview. I'm here with Lacey Rathbun and she is with the uh, 406 Families. Um, I happened to stumble acro across this um, website, which I automatically fell in love with and I think it's a great website. So could you tell a little bit more about 406 Families? Thank you. Well, we um, started a website right before COVID, um, trying to kind of compile different resources, informational things for families and caretakers in Missoula. So if you're looking for where are all the places that do summer camps? Or, hey, I wanna go on a hike with my kid here, but is it stroller friendly? Do I need to bring a baby carrier? So starting to kind of compile those resources all in one place for families. Um, and so we've, we've been doing that for about a year and a half now. I think it pairs very nicely with uh, your guys' social media as well, because I've noticed that you guys are kind of accentuate some of the even local businesses. Like one of the things that I really liked about it was the new food trucks. Like you have a whole tab devoted to food trucks, 
people can find all the new food trucks where they can where they are at certain different times. And I think that's just great. Yeah, well, there's new um, relevant things popping up all the time. And uh, whether you're a grandparent raising grandkids or you're a mom or a dad um, or even a babysitter or a nanny, knowing where there's an ice cream food truck sometimes makes your Friday a little bit easier. And I definitely noticed there's a lot of new ice cream trucks that just uh, dropped. There are. Yeah, ice cream and Japanese shaved ice even. I actually went to that Japanese shaved ice. It's pretty good. They're fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about what is what was the reason for this website to come together? Well, I've noticed that when I go to another city to visit, I'll Google Portland things to do with kids or Seattle things to do with kids. And there's usually a really good resource on here's where our museum is, here's our library, and, and a link to all of those different things. And we didn't really have that in Missoula. And so um, I know as a parent, I was searching for that. And I also wanted to stay up on what are new food trucks that I could take my kids to? When is the library reopening? What are the summer camps that are going on? Um, and so that was one reason why we really wanted to bring something similar to, to the Missoula community. That's really good. That's really great. And I, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm the kind of person who uh, utilizes MissoulaEvents.net. Um, but a lot of times when I find like a camper thing that happens, it's like it's happening right now. And a lot of times, summer camps, it's all about pre-planning. You got to always look ahead. You know, parents map up their children's schedule from top to bottom, stacking them yes. with all these summer camps and then their vacations and stuff like that. Yeah, and you have to log on at a specific time. Otherwise, they are all booked out and you're waitlisted. Um, and I think, too, with so many newer people moving to Missoula, it's really helpful to have those little articles that say, get on the wait list. Sometimes they change. Here's some places that still have camps open. So we're trying to put out articles like that to say, hey, if you didn't get into your first choice of camp, that's fine. There's 40 other places in Missoula yeah. that are doing camps, and they range in age from four years old to 16 year olds. Yep. So there's a wide variety. And I did a summer camp segment on my show where I just kind of went through a lot of the summer camps courtesy of 406families.org. Um, and I just got uh, winded because like after 20 or so, I'm just like, okay, I, I don't know how much more people can take. You guys can look it up yourself. And again, that website is 406families.org. Yeah. I think there's some great places we could go with it too that um, I think if we had the skills or if someone else has the skills and wants to help us create more of like a searchable database so people could filter the camps by ages or interests or time of day mm -hmm. or which week they're offering them. Um, you know, I think there's some places that, that that can grow. Right now we're just three moms that are doing this in our spare time. Um, around nap times and bedtimes and our regular Monday through Friday jobs. So um, it's it's a passion project right now, but I'm glad that it's been such a good tool for others. Well, thank you very much, Lacey. Yeah, thank you for having me. And once again, you can find that website, 406families.org. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's kick things off with some events and some things happening in the city of Missoula. It is time for your events. Uh, you can find out more information about events and more by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net, for everything uh, happening for your weekend and beyond, it is MissoulaEvents.net. I do love this website, and I'm going to kind of give you an overview of what's happening Friday. There's not much happening Friday, but I did want to talk about Jack and the Beanstalk, which is a original show uh, taken from the uh, 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 a royalty-free uh, IP property, MCT, uh, Missoula Children's Center for... Uh, Missoula Children's Theater Center for Performing Arts is putting on Jack and the Beanstalk, an original adaptation of the classic children's story, What Happened When a Young Boy Plants a Wonder Beans in His Own Backyard. For Jack, it is the beginning of a great adventure with a little help from P.T. Wonder and the Giant. Uh, Jack learns a valuable lesson of true happiness. And this is a wonderful show. It starts at 4 p.m. tonight. Um, they're also uh, a business is going to be launching here in Missoula. It is a fire pit business. Yes, a fire pit business. If you have a fire pit in the backyard and you want a little, if you want to improve it, I guess uh, they're going to be having their first ever opal, uh, first ever open house at Montana Fire Pits, the business, uh, from uh, uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. They got door prizes. Um, they're going to – so get fired up and come hang out and check out the showroom. Uh, Saturday – yes, we're jumping right into Saturday. Bird – uh, bird banding, 7 a.m. Milltown State Park. Um, if you're interested in doing it, join the staff from Milltown State Park starting at 7 a.m. Saturday morning and the University of Montana Bird Ecology Lab on Saturday. Um, 
part of this is going to be happening from 7 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. This is event is free and open to kids and adults of all ages. And like always, every Saturday is the Farmer's Market happening from 8 to 1 p.m. It is a wonderful time for a lot of people looking to do the market. Uh, Fix-It Clinic, Home Resource Community Room is going to be... Uh, uh, ho having hosting a fix-it clinic and this is at home resources which is off of Russell Street bring your own worn broken and malfunctioning items to the fix-it clinic to learn more uh, about how to repair them and also Moon Randolph Homestead is doing their open Saturdays bring your friends and family from 11 to uh, 11, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. to get tours of one of the few remaining homesteads uh, you got the Father's Day um, handmade market, which is uh, kicking off. Uh, it is create adorable do-it-yourself gifts for dad, and you can do it at the Emerald Homemade Market. Picnic for the Pav. Oregon State Park at Allegiance Field is hosting a Pavarella Center. Picnic for the Pav is an event that you do not want to miss. They are uh, inviting 100 community members to the open seating for this year's Picnic for the Pav fundraiser. And this is happening from 12 noon to 2 p.m. on Saturday. Snap Communication presents live music by Du Bois. Br bring your own beer. This is going to be at Bonner Park at 6 p.m. Saturday night. And it is an open mic kind of deal. Dancing in the rain. And uh, let me give you more. Uh, <laughs> this is a no judgment zone, even though I <laughs> you can clearly hear judgment in my inflection, my voice. Stand up for Alzheimer's. Gather all. Uh, it's going to be at Gather at All Souls. Spend an evening with some of the funniest people in Missoula while raising money for the Walk to Alzheimer's. There's adult content, viewer discretion is advised. Uh, fundraiser for events for Alzheimer's Association and the Walk to End Alzheimer, hosted by James Johnson. The stand-up comedy show features Sarah Ashwell, Josh Howard, Charlie Macron, and Jordan Demeanor. All sorts of wonderful things happening there as well. Uh, single tickets are $20 or host a VIP table for $150. Several gift basics will be offered as well. All right, so that pretty much does it for my events. I wanted to thank you guys for joining me this morning and for Wake Up Missoula and Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. Take care. <laughs>